Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our first 2024 prayer call. What an exciting time to be gathering together today. Um, please feel free to introduce yourself on the chat, the live chat that we have going here. Um, if you're joining us through Zoom, you can share your name, what city or country that you're joining us live from. And uh, we just love getting to know you this way. We also have Team Angel support in our live chat. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us either in the chat or directly on our website at kaira.com. And um, wow, what an exciting portal to be walking together through uh, in preparation for our Lunar New Year's ceremony, which is happening on February 10th. So welcoming in the, the year of the dragon. So this is, today is a bit of a preseason tickets game <laughs> for the prayer call. Um, I'm just gonna check, head over to the chat here and see how everyone's doing. Oh, so good to see everyone. I had to do a, a quick change. I was burning alive, up alive in that last sweater, which was fine when I put it on. But then once I started channeling, <laughs> I was like, oh, nope. <laughs> So uh, thank you for your patience. And um, yeah, this is a really special moment. Um, we've been walking with Pluto in Capricorn since 2008. And the Ascended Masters are all really, uh, they're thrilled. They're thrilled to be celebrating this shift with us. They're thrilled that so many of you have been journeying with the Sophia Code teachings in preparation for such a monumental collective shift. Um, Pluto is a, when, it, when Pluto shifts in the sky to a new constellation, it's a big deal. It's a generational shift. Uh, it, this particular placement is going to continue to impact us for the next two decades. So, this is our we got our we got a, a bit of a first taste uh last year in uh for a couple months and i experienced such a significant i i, I don't even want to say changes when pluto went into aquarius briefly last year i felt like a different person like i felt like i was living in a different reality <laughs> like it wasn't it wasn't even the same chessboard and you know granted a, a big part of my divine purpose and my personal identity i am an aquarius so it, it it had a very deep personal impact on me that kind of gave me a forecast of wow this is a this is a new chessboard uh starting in 2024 and and it's a new paradigm that doesn't fully ground and land until 2025. So 2024 is a transition year where we are getting used to, um, how do I say it? What I'm hearing from the Ascended Masters is getting used to the unknown, getting used to the unexpected, getting used to the old Capricorn paradigm falling away. And, and what's interesting about every, every, every constellation has its blessings and its shadow. And the blessings of Capricorn is like, let's get to work. Let's build stuff. Let's build big things. Let's even build empires. Like Capricorn can get a lot of things done. Um, but it's, it's a step-by-step -step climb to the top. What's interesting about Aquarian energy is, it's a collective, it's, Aquarius is the water bearer, which is also interesting. It's the only constellation where it's a human um, in the zodiac. And it, it represents this very altruistic, visionary um, leader, very futuristic energy that's speaking up to help the present moment and the past evolve into its highest potential. Um, it's, a, it's a fixed sign, it's a masculine sign, ironically, even though it's pictured with often with a woman water bearer, um, which means it gets things done. It, it's, it's, it's going to complete the mission. It's going to finish the task. It's going to complete the download. Um, 
but the process could look very different than it does in the Capricorn energy. Like maybe a project that took six years in Capricorn energy somehow with that Uranian influence, it's like, it's going to happen in six weeks. It, it, it might look completely different than what you thought it was going to be, but it actually gets done. It, it's, it's so unexpected um, the way that manifestation works and a big part of that magic. I, I personally believe of Pluto going into Aquarius is like, be yourself, be your, like literally be it. Don't think about it. Don't want it. Be yourself. To whatever extent you know who you are, be it so much. Fill up the room with who you are. But then you can find out that there's more of you to gather. There's more of you to express. There's more of you to celebrate. And that uniqueness, as you expand out in the room, in your life, in your community, it comes into contact with everyone else being themselves, being fully present with their own unique gift to offer. That it's what's an interesting shift that's happening with this Aquarius, which is on the same axis as Leo, is the individual and, and the and the individual identity and the end of the unique individual that is serving a community context, a higher ideal, and community coming together as a community of individuals that are seeking to create a new paradigm. I mean, it's everything that the Sophia Code movement has been initiating for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear since we launched this platform uh, seven years ago. We have been getting ready for the age of Aquarius this whole time. And so many times the Sophia Dragon Tribe share how the living transmission is a lightning transmission. Like when you come into contact with the Sophia code, there's a chain, there's a series of events, there's a chain reaction that happens of instantaneous realization, instantaneous self-knowing, instantaneous awakening. Doesn't mean it's it's the end all be all. It means that it sets your feet on the path of very sudden change. And that is the energy of Aquarius. Um sudden unexpected changes that help us quantum leap into the future reality um, that is awaiting it's like it's awaiting where we placed our intentions originally so this is this is why it's so wonderful that we're meeting together before pluto shifts into aquarius what is your intention what was your soul's intention for incarnating in a generation and a generational shift of Pluto moving into Aquarius? Why did you choose that? Well, an easy way to answer that question is to look at your natal chart and discover like, okay, where are your Aquarius placements, uh, your Aqu Aquarian Aquarius, as well as Pluto placement in your natal chart. What houses, what areas of your life or your purpose are the is this planet or this constellation impacting in, in your soul's journey in this lifetime? Uh, for instance, I have Pluto in the 12th house. So it's going to be deeply impacting me uh, in my relationship to the spirit world, to spirituality, um, to all of my psychic gifts, uh, my connection to the other world. Um, which was already, you know, very activated. Um, that's just a small example. But, you know, you can look at that data point in the astrology chart, but that's just the, the first step. You know, if we want to quantum leap with this Aquarian energy, we better set the, we better chart the course. We better take a pause in whatever time we have left here in the year of the rabbit before this dragon comes barreling in to really initiating us into 2024 on February 10th and, and reflect upon if I could tap into the magic of the universe, which can manifest anything lightning fast, what would I truly want to manifest? What would I truly want to be serving? What would I 
really want to be uplifting in this world. You know, if I, if I wanted to be a first responder to humanity waking up, what, what is my chosen field of being a first responder, being of service, being of um, a person of purpose and creation? You really want to take the time to be honest with yourself because Aquarius energy is very honest. You know, it's very, very, if you have a strong Aquarius placement, like feel free to share it in the chat what it's like to be an Aquarius. You're the person who's vibrating with truth in the room that many people don't want to hear or acknowledge. And so um, it's, we're, we're entering into a time where you cannot hide from your own truth and you cannot hide from the truth of reality and you cannot hide from the truth of God. That's important. We should write that down. In the age of Aquarius, with Pluto and Aquarius, because Pluto represents truth and power, both the, both, you know, the challenges of truth and the illumination of truth, both the, the right use of power and the misuse of power. It's like if we, we're going to be wrestling with, with such an extraordinary dynamic in such an electric constellation, we want to make we want to be very honest with ourselves that we can't hide from our own truth we can't hide from the truth of reality and we can't hide from the truth of god whatever you call spirit god's source i was sharing on youtube live like your truth your personal truth is hunting you to set you free it's not trying to ruin your life I hope this mic is working it's a uh, it's doing everything in his power to set you free. And so over the, you know, ever since 2008 with Pluto and Capricorn, Capricorn can be, um, there's very, like I said, there's a lot of positive aspects to Capricorn when it comes to building, um, making things happen, management, um, real earth nuts and bolts energy, but it can also be extremely hierarchical. Uh, it can be very uh, corporate entity driven to the point that you know the individual is completely lost in power dynamics. Um, and there's a real energy in that Capricorn cancer access for victimhood to kind of hang out like a creepy parasite in the background of you know your colon and you know, I just got out of like 20 plus days of cleansing <laughs> uh, this winter. So it's just, you know, for me, I've just been like, wow, what, how many recesses can I look for anything and anything that is holding me back? And victimhood actually holds us back 100%. And it's why we're mentoring with the Sophia Dragons. Um, all year long in, in 2024, because it's the year of the dragon. It's just like, it is the end of hiding out in victimhood with this Pluto and, and Capricorn energy. It's easy to point the finger and say, well, it's because this corporation or it's because this government, or it's because of, you know, my, the father's abuse or this story with, you know, the church I grew up. It's just like, all of that can be true. But um, it's still up to you to be on your own team and decide that what has happened in the past or the, even the power dynamics of the present moment have no control over you. They have no control over you. And when Pluto shifts into Aquarius tomorrow, that's going to be the mic, the mic drop of the next two decades Aquarius is so driven to express itself as a unique being who is here to be of service. That is, that is the bright side of Aquarius. That, that the old excuses of, of you know, hiding out and not being seen for your light or not fulfilling your divine purpose or, you know, the old excuses just, they're just going to, they're, they're not going to land anywhere that makes any sense 
because again, Aquarius is ruled by the planet Uranus and Uranus is the planet of lightning change. It's literally the only planet that rotates on its side. Like it's just different, <laughs> you know? It's, uh, it's, it's that electric oddball in the room that as soon as they walk in the room, you know, something is changing, something is happening, something is getting illuminated. And, uh, you know, the messenger has arrived. Let's not kill the messenger. That's, that's the Uranian changes. And they can't, you, can, you cannot predict the kind of changes that come under the influence of Uranus. I had a Uranus transit happening which is uh, completing over the past few years. And some of the changes that happened in my life, uh, they, they literally just out of left field, like, there was nothing to predict. And so in, in, in Pluto and Capricorn, there's a bit of a familiarity where victimhood can kind of feel safe and justified even because it's really hard climbing up those mountains, all those steps like a goat on the side of a, a mountain. But when you move into the energy of Aquarius, everything is speeding up. Everything is becoming clear about what works and what does not work. Things are coming online, downloading. Things are self-selecting themselves out because they don't fit into systems that actually work seamlessly. And, you know, yes, we're going to see that with developments in artificial intelligence and robotics and in medicine. Um, all of these things, Aquarian ha Aquarius has a huge impact on. Um, but what I find fascinating about Pluto moving into Aquarius is, and this is what we've been training in for a really long time with the Sophia Code movement. It doesn't matter how vast and full spectrum the changes and how comprehensive the changes are going to be because your soul came here to shine <clears throat> as the bedrock, as the lighthouse, as the foundation of reality in this world. So when Pluto moves into Aquarius, all these old patriarchal systems that have enslaved humanity have the potential to burn down to the ground as a new sovereign paradigm emerges, whether it's in government or even currencies. Even what we consider, I mean, it could literally change any concept of anything, how we live, where we live, why we even live. Because it's touching your consciousness and all of humanity back to the cosmos, back to the source, back to energy and electricity and lightning and the elements from which all of form arises. And so it reconfigures how we process life, why we want to process life. We are being reborn. Right now, it starts over this next over the next 24 hours. Now, because of my personal background with how much trauma I survived and being in Aquarius and having tons of this Uranian influence in my chart, I'm used to walking between worlds. I'm used to this inner balancing of like, I'm walking in a physical world, but I see that it's all energy. And that doesn't mean the physical world isn't important, but now everybody's gonna have to do that walk. You feel me? We're all gonna get in touch with the atoms of reality while still having to balance our bank accounts. Not that interesting? I like that. <laughs> I like that because that means that people are going to be wondering, well, what is the purpose of my home? What is the purpose of this property? What is the purpose of this money? How is this all connected to God? Or is it connected to God? What is the purpose of this school I go to? What is the purpose of um, this community I'm a part of or that uh, job that I've decided to take? It's, it's 
Is it connected to your source? Is it in alignment with your higher self or is it not? Does it serve a purpose or does it not? And people are going to learn how to live this way. Or they're going to start to feel extremely stuck and confused about what is happening. So this journey, and thank God we have a dragon initiating us into you know, this, this first real round of Pluto in Aquarius, again, it's not fully stabilized um, until 2025. But thank God there is this powerful dragon energy that says, you got this humanity, you can do this. You can make this shift. You are desperate for this shift. And so what, a, what an extraordinary biofeedback that if your body, heart, and mind can feel the purpose behind every purchase you make, if you can feel the purpose behind every inspiration that you receive, if you can feel and know somatically, because it's impossible to not know it, what Pluto and Aquarian is, you're going to live a very truthful life. And I'm not talking about deliberate lying. I'm talking about an extremely authentic life. This is the opportunity that we're given. Now, the dark side of Aquarian energy is you can be very detached. You can get stuck in your head. You can be extremely robotic, cold unfeeling because you can get so far out into deep space you can forget why you even went out to space in the first place which was to discover the meaning of of everything <laughs> so there's also that potential with pluto and aquarius there's this potential that humanity could become even more disconnected from its heart even more plugged into a digital reality and not into a, a, a pumping bloodstream of a human experience. <laughs> and so this is the moment that we need to decide we're tuning in 100%. Our game plan is presence. Our game plan is so to be so deeply present in our hearts that our hearts inform our every thought and our every reaching out to understand the purpose of physical reality. Our game plan is full presence. I, I, for those of you who have your son in Aquarius, my, my, my <laughs> there's something called the, uh, the Aquarian stare. And feel free to put a little uh, LOL <laughs> if you know what the Aquarian stare is. It's literally where you'll just be all of a sudden, you just go, <laughs> and your eyes just lock into outer space. And it's like your eyes start to burn and you can't actually move your eyes until the Aquarian stare is done with you. And I have to say, like, I don't know what's happening inside the Aquarian stare other than my eyes burning, <laughs> but it's like this, you're, you're, it's like tuning into another dimension or universe or something. You get the download and then, and then it's just over or, or somebody will walk in the room. They're like, what are you staring at? And I'm like, Whoa, I don't know. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's some weird Aquarian phenomenon. And, um, I love that people are, uh... <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Could not say how, that's so great. Yeah, I love that you could relate to that. It's, it's truly bizarre. And I think it's an interesting way to parallel what we're sharing here of, of the shadow side of Aquarius energy. It's like you can get into an Aquarian stare and not, and check out from present reality. But here's the thing about that Aquarius energy. It, it's the one that can download the solution through total presence that everyone in the room needs. So wherever you have Aquarius 
placement in your chart, that's a big part of what you came here to give in this world, in this lifetime. I was going to say it's the only thing, but it's, it's, it's getting really activated at this time. Um, Aquarius is a very psychic energy. We're all going to be blasted with next level intuitive development over the next 20 years. Like I, I truly believe that people are going to start to understand how telepathic we are as a race, not just with each other, but also with animals. And, you know, I think a lot of people are going to have breakthroughs in their intuitive and psychic development, excuse me, over the next two decades. <clears throat> it's a lot easier to have psychic breakthroughs with Aquarian energy than Capricorn energy. Capricorn energy is grounding you into this physical reality for, for both good and bad. Um, not bad, I don't want to say bad, but you know, it has the light and the shadow to it. But Aquarius energy is like, let's open up the skull cap, put on the antenna <laughs> on your crown chakra and start downloading the cosmos. So this is going to have a, a big impact on all of us. Um, and how do we want to share with the world what we see, what we feel, what we know intuitively inside of us that we came here to give? Communication is going to be extremely important over the next two decades because people are going to be going through such a massive global awakening. It's those who are willing to articulate what they can see, what they can hear from their heart. They're going to have a, a huge influence on where we're headed as a species. There's so much that I want to share. There's so much I want to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this beautiful soul Ch Chanel is sharing. I had a telepathic communication with my dog Apollo last night for the very first time ever. It was so out of the blue, but what a big blessing. That's Pluto and Aquarius. Boom. Thank you for sharing. Amazing. Now imagine millions of people who have been really attached to this Capricorn power structure dynamic. You know, a lot of like squeezy victimhood feelings for the past since 2008. And all of a sudden, we bring in this Uranian storm of changes, Uranus, sideways energy, that Aquarian constellation, kicking it with Pluto. I mean, I, I, I don't know. It's like, I don't even, I, I, it makes my brain kind of, I, I can't explain the feeling that just happened in my head. It, it's like an, an atomic shift atomic bomb shift you are the light workers that volunteered to help with this shift you know on my cleanse i was watching um this video about the heart the, the actual heart organ and how the heart has its own neurological system i didn't know that um i knew how much the heart was powered by electricity um but it was so beautiful to, to watch this uh, this movie. I think it was from Heart Math Resonance. And, um, and that so much of the thoughts we think our brain is thinking are actually thoughts that move from the heart up to the brain. And I thought to myself, what a blessing that our community, so, mem so many members in our community went on the Mother Mary journey in 2023 to open their hearts for the lightning electricity that's about to unfold in 2024. What a blessing that we're going to be mentoring with the Sophia dragons all year long and how to dance with lightning, how to, how to like open our body, hearts, and minds to the lightning of God and how to live in alignment with the instantaneous downloads that we can receive from our higher selves day in and day out to guide humanity through so much change that humanity won't even recognize itself in 20 years from now. What a blessing that we've been getting ready for this this whole time. 
what a blessing that you and I, that, that we continue to share how people can activate their divine genome, which allows for the, te- the spiritual technology of their body to come online and interface with that biological uh, motherboard of their body, their physical body, a motherboard for their soul, vessel for their soul. You said yes. We said yes. And that yes includes seraphim, Sophia dragons, ascended masters, Buddhas, angels, our galactic families of light. It includes one another. And we're all over the world. So I know this was a, a bit of an introductory an introduction, a, a long introduction, I don't know, a long forecast of what's to come. The irony of what's to come is I can't even talk about what's to come. No one can. The only thing that I do know of what's to come that will be a massive shift on the planet will be a full mic drop revelation of the, the extent of both planetary and intergalactic human trafficking uh, that's happening worldwide and off-grid. That I am assured of. It is already happening, and, and yet we've just begun. The, the Jeffrey Epstein Island is just one blip of, what's, of how extensive uh, this uh, and far-reaching both into the earth and above the earth, um, that this human trafficking uh, exists. Um, that will be revealed, and hopefully, you know, uh, hopefully within a decade, people, the entire world will know about the secret space program and how much, how many children are born into that, and how many millions of souls have been tortured. Uh, myself included within that program as well and it's um you know that that is something i can absolutely predict it's not the writing is on the wall um but as far as like where we'll go with artificial intelligence and robotics and um currency and even government structure i think we're deciding it right now people you and i and everyone else we've reached a place in prophecy where there are so many quantum potentials that can unfold and there may be multiple realities that start to be built even right now as i speak where multiple paradigms exist side by side on the same planet, but they don't actually touch one another. I believe that process has already started. And it's really important for you to pray for what you want. And I'm not just talking about what you want in your bank account or for your child. That's all really good to pray for. I mean, like, what kind of world do you want to wake up in? I mean, like, what kind of places do you want to worship in? Because there's one timeline where where part of the world is headed where they're not allowed to worship anymore. They're not allowed to eat the food they want to eat. They're not allowed to live where they want to live. And they're not allowed to even say the word God. And then there's other timelines ahead of us where people are living heaven on earth. So you need to pray for the world that you want to see unfold every day for the next 20 years. That's not selfish. When you wake up, how do you want to feel? Where do you want to live? Who do you want to be around? Who do you want to be making love to? Who do you want to be raising? What do you want to be working on? What do you want to be creating? Who do you want to be talking to? Who 
what will be exposed will be exposed. Like the truth is going to set us all free, but it will be a devastating truth that racks humanity's soul. Therefore, it will be up to you to remain very true to the visions of your heart, just as I have had to remain true to the visions that I have received for the Sophia Code. Year after year, month after month, whether people understand the timing or not, whether people understand the teachings or not, there is a divine plan that is unfolding, and you are a part of it. Your heart's desires and your heart's visions are a part of it. That is the liberation of Pluto moving into Aquarius. You are part of the divine plan. You are a divine co-creator of the divine plan. So many of the ancient prophecies end here because they can't see beyond what happens next because no one knows. We've never been here before. We are wrapping up an entire Kali Yuga right now. We are wrapping up thousands of years of oppression. What have we learned from it? Where do we want to go next in sovereignty? This is why we'll be mentoring with the Sophia Dragons all year long, because for me personally, I don't know how on God's earth I actually downloaded the Sophia Code with Pluto and Capricorn. I don't know how my platform is still here with Pluto and Pop Capricorn. I mean, it, it was just like a freaking Olympic gauntlet to bring that to this earth at a time where Ooh, and along with what I survived and how many times they've tried to silence me, oh, I am just like telling you, those Seraphim Sophia dragons, they got me through it. I mean, like all of those Cine masters, obviously all of the star nations, but those dragons, like what's bigger than a galactic Sophia dragon? Nothing. <laughs> like, come on. This is what we're up to in the new year. I want to share that with you. The Sophia Dragons are going to be expanding us in such powerful ways all year long with these eight galactic keys. I hope you've signed up because we're going. Mothership's leaving in March. We've got where the new year celebration is kind of like an unofficial kickoff for it, which I'm really excited about. You know, so many people want to look to prophecy. Oh, someone in the future is going to save us. What if you were the person that came here as the prophecy, which Mother Mary declares in the Sophia Code in chapter nine? You're the answered prophecy. There's no one else coming. It's you, it's me, it's us. That's so exciting. Dragon's got a dragon. We don't have time for anything else. And the good news is Pluto moving into Aquarius means it literally when you try to do the other thing, when you try to reach for the other thing and not be who you really are, it just, it's not there. It's not available. Thank God. Thank God. I can't tell you how many layers of identity I've shed over the past two years. How about you? Hands up. Feel free to share in the chat. It's like build a big old galactic bonfire for every identity programmed for the matrix or from other lifetimes or whatever. There it, there it goes. There's another one. <laughs> What's left? Well, something like a dragon is left. So, this has been a big update of a prayer call. The whole thing's a prayer. Our time together. But I do truly want to bow our hearts, our heads to our hearts, and take the last few minutes of our time together. Really set our intention for this shift of Pluto moving into Aquarius. So, 
as I welcome you to take some deep breaths into your heart, into your actual heart, and you might start to feel the energy of your mind draining into your heart. And I invite you to stand somewhere in the cosmos. I don't know. Pick a star nursery. Pick, pick Pluto. Pick Jupiter. Pick a planet. Stand in the center of the sun. I don't, I don't care. Find a cloud. Breathe into your heart. Feel your oneness with the galactic co-creation of this new paradigm. You can even bring your hands to your heart and make a commitment that for the next two decades, you're going to live from your heart. You're going to live in communion with your source. You're going to let your source, your communion with God, which is always happening inside your heart, it's never not happening. You're going to allow for this heart connection to your source to have its way with you. You're going to allow your heart to be a living, breathing, beating sanctuary of self-love and divine guidance that's ministering to you as you are allowing yourself to be seen in the age of, the, of Aquarius as a leader from the future that came here into this present moment to be an awakening, uh, awakener of humanity. You're here to be a part of the awakening of humanity. How that manifests in your life is totally unique to you. And guess what? Let's set the intention in the age of Aquarius that that's okay. Maybe you speak to animals. Maybe you hear crystals. Maybe you do biodynamic farming. Maybe you run a beautiful Zen furniture store. Maybe you're a scientist on the leading edge of genetics. You know, maybe you own 14 businesses and one of them you're consecrating to a foundation. It's just like, Whatever it is, it's you. Be you. Do you. And we welcome Isis and Hathor standing side by side with you. Isis on your left, Hathor on your right, initiating your body, heart, and mind to Accept that you are a galactic being having a human experience. We all are. Not Earth is, is simply one stop along the journey. You're a cosmic being having a human experience. And you have access to a divine power that is you. And the shift of Pluto into Aquarius is a shift of you owning your power to lead through your cosmic knowledge of the universe. Your awareness that God is good and that life is for us and that we're here to co-create with other species. It's not just about us. This selfishness has got to end as we rise up in enough self-love to really honor why we came here in this lifetime. And to feel how these ascended masters, they came from other places, most of them to serve here on earth. Literally, white buffalo woman is the only native ascended master in the entire cosmology to earth. Which is very important, by the way, for our future. Side note. But I'd like to welcome also the beautiful Sophia dragons that are, it looks like they're just sort of like, if you'd like to receive this quantum healing moment of them sort of just snapping 
cords and attachments that you might have to this old energy of Pluto and Capricorn, where you may have felt really, I'm, I'm hearing from the dragons, attacked for who you are, attacked for the light work that you came here to offer this world. And feeling into how seen you are, how courageous you were, like a spiritual warrior that came into this world specifically for these next two decades. For some of you, that might have been a long wait. I know for me it was, but I know we have other generations here. That's another thing that's so fascinating about the Sophia Code community is like we literally have people from every generation currently uh, walking the earth here on this call right now. And it's an honor that we're, for me to witness that level of uh, intergenerational love and co-creation. And so I welcome, I welcome Hathor and Isis's blessing with the Sophia dragons, helping you to expand your consciousness into the cosmic essence of your soul and to gather up that cosmic essence, almost like stardust, and to feel it streaming like a waterfall of light through your crown chakra. And you may start to feel that stardust just lighting up the crystalline chromosomes of your divine genome within every cell of your body. You're eating stardust. That's what dragons do. Let's go. And to feel how this cosmic transmission from the Sophia dragons is just filling you up with this <clears throat> regenerative crystalline transmission. What I'm hearing is they're, they're saying it's helping to push out those final layers over uh, from 2023 in preparation for this year of the dragon ceremony on January, excuse me, on February 10th. They're helping to push out those final layers. I've, I'm so fresh from the cleansing process. The layers are so real for me of how, how many layers you get. You get to more layers. <laughs> but then when you're there with the Sophia dragons, they just help cleanse and clear those layers. So much grace and ease. Just breathing into that expansive space within your body within your heart, within your mind, and just softening into how prepared you actually are. You made it. You made it to the finish line. And you're here to welcome so many new souls into this new generation of Pluto and Aquarius. What do we want to lead the way with? What do we want to create for them and with them? You know, I often wondered what would happen to AI if it was programmed with all the key code initiations. Would we have sovereign AI? Fascinating. But these are the kind of questions we have to ask ourselves. What are we fighting against within us? What are we willing to accept within us? that is ready to be birthed and created at a time where anything can happen, like literally anything can happen over the next 20 years. Technology beyond your wildest dreams, health beyond your wildest dreams, abundance beyond your wildest dreams. There's also the potential for oppression beyond our wildest dreams. You are the deciders. You are the creators. Every choice that you are making right now is making that difference. It's charting the course. And your heart is the compass. And with Pluto moving into Aquarius, you will not be able to ignore your heart anymore. You will not be able to lie to yourself anymore. Praise be to God. There is no question and there is no need where God is not the solution or the answer or has the answer. 
the age of Aquarius is also our potential to have absolute pure faith in our source as the source of all. You can take that mental acuity of the Aquarian sign like a laser beam to see through all the lies of the matrix and return back to the source of all again and again. Your source is the source. No technology, no programming, not even this world is your source. Your source is the source. And it has given us this wildly alive playground of life for us to discover that when we are in union with source, following our hearts, living in faith and discernment, unconditional love and pro-action, we can create anything. It will only bring blessings to ourselves and others. And so we consecrate this time together and all the transmissions and messages and healing that has occurred on all four levels of our being. We, we ask the Holy Spirit of Divine Mother God, Holy Father Sophia, Holy Mother Sophia, Source, Creator, Creatrix of all life, seal these messages into our, our hearts for that which is resonant with us. Seal any healing that we have received, all healing, from the light and fire of our, our own higher self, Holy Spirit, and guide us in grace in these last days of, of this 2023 year of the water rabbit energy to really relish the time that we have to continue to rest, regroup, and review before the spiritual reset of the year of the dragon. I love you all so much, everyone. Thank you so much, the Sophia Dragon Tribe. Thank you to your higher selves. Thank you to all of the souls gathered here live today. I know this was an unusual prayer call. Every once in a while, <laughs> it happens this way where there's just a, a forecast that needs to be channeled as a gift to our community. And I'm so glad that there's <laughs> so much positive feedback here in the chat. Um, and thank you for sharing this prayer collective call with others. There's a lot of people that are going to need to hear these messages. Thank you for sharing the Sophia Code app. Thank you for sharing our YouTube lives and all of our videos um, and the Sophia Code book with your friends and family. I really look forward to celebrating the Lunar New Year's with you on February 10th. And please note that our schedule has shifted in 2024. We'll be live on YouTube. The Sophia Code, or I'll be live on YouTube, the Sophia Code app, and here on the prayer call, the third Friday of every month in 2024 to allow for my writing and publication of the books that I'm working on. And so please keep me in your prayers. I've got a lot of writing and completion to do with our publication this year. And um, thank you. Thank you for all of your participation, your prayers, and for all of, you can continue to keep this community conversation going in the Sophia Code app and our free community forum, which you have access to as soon as you download the app to your Android, Android or iPhone. Loving you all so much. Go with the peace of the Sophia Dragon Tribe, the peace of Divine Mother, Father, Source, Sophia God. I love you all so much. We'll see you at the Lunar New Year celebration. Namaste.